Hey guys, today we're going to be reviewing the Rack Mount IT RM CI T6 kit, which allows you to rack mount your Meraki MX68, 68CW, or 68W. They're all the same dimensions, so they'll all fit in the same kit. The first thing you'll notice about this kit is it's nice hardened steel. It's not like a plastic kit or just a regular rack mount shelf that you might have. Um, it's made out of steel, it's made specifically for this Meraki device to fit in there including where the holes line up which I'll show you later and then one of the other nice features with this kit is it has a fiber optic cable that goes around to the front and why that's important is with your Meraki MX68 device the status LEDs on the front of the device right so if you were to just set it like this you could see the status device but there's two problems. One, all of your Ethernet ports are now on the back side. And two, your antennas are also on the back side. In this case, the 68CW. So now you're going to chew up a whole bunch of rack space. Just dead space for these antennas to be able to stick up. So with that fiber optic cable, and the way this kit is situated, you put it in backwards. And now your antenna are hanging out the front which don't chew up any RUs, and all your Ethernet ports are on the front. So that just leaves the status light, which will shine through the fiber optic cable, and you'll be able to see it right here. So the first thing you have to do to your Meraki, it has rubber feet on the bottom, so you just need to pop those off. It's just like a sticker, so you just gotta pop them off, and now you'll notice there's screws here. The rack mount kit comes with the right bit to undo those screws. It also comes with three tie straps, cable ties. So two of them are to hold down the power brick, which we'll do later. The power brick goes right here. And then it has holes in it where the cable ties go through to hold the brick nice and still. And then those screws that I showed you on the bottom of the Meraki, they'll come from the underside through this, these two holes here to hold the Meraki in place so it doesn't slide out either. And the one thing I noticed is with the rubber feet, it, it won't really fit. You can't put it in there correctly. So removing the rubber feet solves a few different things. One, it fits through the opening, of course. It also allows you to get to the screws that you need to make it nice and sturdy when it's in the rack. And then the other thing is, without those rubber feet, it's laying flat against the, the steel here. So it just, it just makes it more sturdy all around. So what we're going to do now is I'll take the screws out, and I'll slide this in and put the screws in, and then show you how that looks. Okay, so now let's take the screws out the bottom here. And it comes with instructions, so you just... Go down through the instructions. As I already mentioned, you take off the rubber feet in the bottom of the Cisco, the Meraki appliance, and now we're going to remove the two bolts from the front side of the appliance. So this is the front. We're going to go ahead and take these screws out of here. You preferably, preferably want to do this on a desk or clean workspace. Um, if you're trying to do this while you're holding it with one hand uh, in front of a in front of the rack, maybe in the data center or whatever, um, you know, greater chance you might drop these screws. So just be mindful of that. You don't want to lose these. My guess is Meraki won't sell you extra screws. I'm going to put them aside in a safe spot for a second. And then as mentioned, you're going to just slide it in the front here. Now, you don't really have to worry about anything because with those rubber feet off, it fits in here nice and tight. Um, it, look, the screws aren't even in it. Um, it's right where it's supposed to be. There's no adjustment. There's no nothing. You just slide it in. It's done. And then you just make sure that the front of it's setting up against these brackets here. And 
then you just got to be careful when you flip it over because as you see it, it it does like to move around a little bit here before the screws are put back in and you can see here the screw holes already line up so we're just going to go ahead and put these screws back in They want to set this down while you're doing it. But just trying to make sure it's facing the camera. These holes are recessed, so at the end of the day, the screws aren't really that much different than when they're in there originally. So it's not like they're hanging way out, for example. So you just you don't want to over tighten them. Of course, these are just small electronic screws, just nice and snug. Um, it's not really, you know, nothing's really going to happen. You're just trying to keep it from sliding back out, so you don't need to over tighten. So now they're in there. I mean, you can see this is nice and sturdy already. Good solid construction. Got the antenna sticking up. Now we're going to go ahead and put the power brick. Now one thing you want to notice with the power brick is you can put it in there a couple different ways. You just want to make sure you situate it so nothing's in the way. And you want to leave yourself some room to be able to tuck this extra part of the cable away. And then what you're going to do is just slide, you're going to take this in, and there's a hole right here at the bottom. So you're just going to slide this through, and then it comes down and around and through here. And then there's a little, just a little tiny cutout at the front. So you can pull out just enough to plug it in there this nice and situated. You don't want to make this the bend here too tight, but you just want to kind of keep an eye on it because you of course don't want it sticking too far out either because it might run into the front of your your door when you shut the door of your cabinet if you if you have a cabinet instead of a rack. So you want to you want it tight but not too tight. And like I said you're just gonna kind of tuck this cord away out of the way and you want to make sure it doesn't get pinched by anything so like if if you're sliding this in um, into your rack and you only have one RU of clearance you just want to make sure nothing's going to get pinched and then you're just going to go ahead and route these cable ties down through You want to do it this way. Um, you want to make sure these stay at the top side because otherwise they're going to be at the bottom. And again, you just want to, you're trying to make this exactly one RU or as close as you can get, um, just to, depending on your, your rack setup. So if you were to put these the opposite way, now you're going to have this, this piece and this sticking out the bottom so it's not going to be flat so you just want to make sure these go on the top side and you're just going to tighten these down and again just like the screws on here they don't have to be too tight you're just trying to keep the power brick from falling out Same as, as mentioned earlier, um, you want to make sure that these, when you're done, they're on the side. And it doesn't matter which side you use, you just want to make sure they're on the side 
because this, again, if, if they're on the top here, you're not going to be one RU anymore. You're going to have a, something that's probably going to get snagged when you try to rack mounting it. So just side these over, slide them over to the side before you do the final tightening. It doesn't have to be perfect, but again, it's got a it's got a bracket right here. If you can see it at this point, it might be too dark, but there's a bracket here to make sure that the brick so it does two things. One, it helps you line it up. So now it's it's pretty flat with the back side here. But more importantly, it helps so you're not this bend right here isn't too tight. You just want to kind of play with it. If you, if you get it lined up here, your bend here going to the power brick isn't too tight, so you're not gonna hurt anything with that. And then again, you just want to make sure this bend isn't too tight either. Then you just go ahead, same thing, you, you don't want to leave these, right, because now it's more than 19 inches wide. It's going to get in the way when you go to put that in the rack. So just trim these off. And now you're good to go. It's all ready to rack mount. Comes with an extra cable tie just in case you need it. Plug this power cord in the back here. And you can see in a second. I don't know if you can see it because the lights lights pretty bright here. Let me uh, let me turn down the light for a second. Now you can hopefully see it a little better. You got a red or an orange uh, status light on the front as the MX68 CW is power cycling coming online. Um, I don't have any, as you can see, I don't have any Ethernet cables or WAN or anything plugged in. Now it's green, blue, it's going to do its normal cycle through the different colors while it's trying to boot up. But like I mentioned, there's no, nothing plugged into it obviously, so it's not going to not gonna go gray or anything. But you get the idea. You get the status light on the front. Turn the light back on here. You got your status light. Make sure all your stuff is tucked away in here. Um, you got your ethernet, you got your antenna, you got your power cord, everything's good to go. Now, um, I did check this with another one. In a, in a typical cabinet, these aren't gonna cause any clearance issues. You're normally gonna have a couple inches at least, so you're not gonna have any problems with most cabinets at least shutting the door. Um, I obviously can't say that's the case for all cabinets, but but you got probably a good two, three inches. I mean, you could tighten this a little more if you needed to. So, actually, let me just grab a ruler here. So you got, I'd say two and a half, two and a half inches. Um, without making this too much of a tight angle here. You got two and a half inches from the front of the rack. So where you're gonna actually rack mount it to the front here, right? So two and a half inches, good to go. Everything's plugged in, solid here. Um, and then one other thing here in the f on the back side you'll notice is it's got these, right here it's got these brackets, these holes cut out in, in the mount. So if you needed to, um, Rackmount IT can make custom kits for you to hang a piece of metal off the back here because you'll notice it's not very deep at all. Um, so including that two and a half inches, we got not even, not even 12 inches. Um, if you want to include this power cable here, I guess you got probably got 13 inches um, from the two and a half clearance on the front to the back here, probably about 13 inches just to be safe. So you still got plenty of room left to mount other things behind it. So they sell these kits. Um, I'm not sure if they have standard ones, but, but they can make you custom brackets or plates that would hook onto here and screw in nice and sturdy. Uh, so you'd have a, a piece of metal or steel coming up sitting here 
where you could put, for example, a, uh, a modem, um, any kind of device, an ATA device is probably the, the one that's most common, I'm going to guess, with a Meraki like this. So, you know, you obviously can't use a dial-up modem with this for out of band, but maybe you have a little ATA device for your POTS lines or whatnot. You could hang it off the back here. So that's pretty nice. Uh, cradle point. You know, if you had a cradle point or something, not that you would really put it in the rack, but any kind of device, any kind of smaller device you can hang off the back here. So that's that's pretty much it. So this is this fits a normal 19 inch telco rack, IT rack I should say. Um, it, uh, it doesn't come with rack mount screws but you should have the screws that mount that match up to your rack anyway. So that's one nice thing. Um, you just go ahead, slide this in, put the screws in and you're good to go. Um, one thing I did notice here is that this power brick, it's not exactly flat with the top of this. Um, and then one other thing I'd recommend is the 68 CW especially, it gets quite warm. Um, even when you're not really pushing it too hard, it, it does get pretty warm. So if you have the space in your rack, I would recommend at least one RU above it just to allow a little better cooling. Um, and also because, like I said, this power brick isn't exactly lined up with the front. So if you allow yourself at least one RU on top, you should be good to go. And then along the same lines, um, let me just unplug it here. Easier to turn around. Along the same lines, what you, you'll notice here is unlike a regular rack mount shelf that typically is solid, they're not all solid, some of them have fins cut, but, um, you know, the normal shelf that an IT closet in your remote site would have is typically solid. So if you were to put this on a solid cabinet, the airflow would be limited, but as you'll notice here on the bottom, um, there's holes cut out. So for one, it's nice because then now you can read your serial number and everything on the bottom here but also to help with a little bit of airflow. Um, and then like I mentioned earlier, it's, it's only about 12 inches from the clearance on the front here to the back, 12 to 13 inches. So you still got plenty of room for airflow on the back. So all in all, it's a really nice kit. Definitely recommend checking it out. And just one more time, it's the Rack Mount IT. It's the RMCI T6. Thanks for watching.